Um, Dad's music, um, he, he just lived it. It really wasn't an instrument that he couldn't play or perform on, on stage with. Um, well, you know, I'm biased because I grew up with him, but you know, I, I think he was yeah, always sort of leading the way and we were always in awe of him. You know, He was going out and he was playing when he was 16, so he was already playing in the, in the clubs in the city. Like we're sort of crawling and he's running, you know, he, he was away. Trying, uh, we were trying to make a living <laughs> as musicians, which didn't quite work. Everyone had day jobs. Uh, we would go to such places as uh, the Bowl, which was in Vulture Street, just near the Marta Hospital, or the Scene, which was down in uh, closer to the Valley. But yeah, just a really good scene happening. How did I meet Jimmy Brolsford? Well, but I met Jimmy the first year I went to Camp Hill State High School. First day I was there, we sort of ran into each other and we, something about us clicked, you know? And uh, that we just formed a lifelong friendship right from there, you know? Um, I believe around the age of 14, he was playing guitar in bands. Um, my grandfather was uh, a roadie for them at a young age when they were young, driving them to gigs. Um, I believe he um, helped fund uh, buying some of the equipment and things to get them started. I was fortunate enough to win third prize in the lot lottery years ago. and. Uh, the first thing uh, he wanted was a guitar, so I sent him out for music lessons over to a chap over at Mount Cravat. Actually, I used to work with him, but he was a music teacher, and uh, after about a month, I asked him how they were going, you know, how, how Jim was doing, and uh, he said, well, as a matter of fact, he's teaching me things that I didn't know. And he was only 14. Huh? I was, you know, struggling on the front step with an acoustic, you know, type of thing. Um, and, he'd, and he'd pop in and, 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 you know, g'day, you know, just as kids meet, you know, and, oh, you got a guitar, have you? Yeah, yeah, oh, I guess I go. And he, you know, picked it up and he played. This kid, kid could actually play, you know. It was like blues licks and, and, and uh, you know, finger-picking country styles and, and, and stuff and say, oh, hang on, <laughs> I want to do that. Here's Jimmy Brassie, he's got his brand new Reckenbacher guitar and a, and a Vox amp that he's got a razor blade and cut slits in the, in the flame and speakers, <laughs> you know, for better sounds and all this sort of, he's, he's into all that, you know, like we're sort of crawling and he's running, you know. I used to just watch him play, watch his fingers and, and in particular, Something that always fascin fascinated me was that he had the, the the tip of one of his fingers missing. When he was a kid, he he uh, got his finger caught, slammed in the door of a car, and uh, so I think it was uh, either his middle finger or or, or his um, third finger there, and around the top of the finger was always bulged out and accentuated, but. It's like Stretch said he used that to his advantage. I mean, he could play, uh, uh, he could play a, a bar chord that can cover two strings with just the, the tip of that one finger, you know. He was an exceptional vocalist. He had a, a, a very good record collection. He'd go, oh, here, listen to this. This is Lightning Hopkins, you know, or, or, or um, John Lee Hooker, Robert Johnson, here you go. Have a, have a listen, you know, B.B. King, get a B.B. King album, here, I got one, listen to this, you know, and he'd play the licks. He was already playing in the, in the clubs in the city, 
you know, like the St. George Club and, 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 and uh, maybe the Primitive. And that's where the formation of, of, of the Bay City Union kind of happened. Bay City Union was a group of musicians uh, that formed together here in Brisbane, it seems like in the eastern suburbs, seems to be where they've, they've formed. Some great members in Bay City Union, Glenn Wheatley and Matt Taylor and uh, the likes of those guys come out of that band. I didn't know anything about the Bay City Union until um, Glenn Wheatley hired them to come in and play at the St George Club. I, first time I ever saw Jim, I thought he was an arrogant little shit. Can I say that? The music they played was very similar to what we were playing in the South Town Moods. It was early Pretty Things, Rolling Stones. I ain't got you, you know. I got women to the left of me. Bang, bang. I got lemon to the right of me, etc., etc. You know, it was all blues based. I know that there were two songs. I think they might have been an A and a B side um, that they put out, and. Um, uh, haven't heard them, so I'd be very keen to hear them. I believe that there was a, a, a tape that was made at 4BC uh, that um, there is one copy in existence that Glenn Wheatley has, but it's been water damaged, and I believe uh, Matt Taylor's lost his version as well. So, you know, it's a bit of a holy grail, that one. I remember uh, Matty Taylor being very upset because they just released o, o Maureen and, and the Monkees. Uh, released Mary Mary or something at the same time, you know. They used to just play wherever they'd get work, they'd play, you know. Yeah. And once they played at one place, well, they'd want them back, you know. I doubt you'd call, you'd call, you'd say that the Bay City Union were, were had a large following in popularity. The gigs they did do were would be full of their particular fans, you know, who may not have been big in, in, in numbers, but they are big in, in, you know, in their support. As soon as you got the chance to, for the Bay City Union, they got pretty well known. Uh, and as soon as the opportunity came for them to go, they went and he, he was with them, you know. So I was a bit surprised when Jimmy actually pulled out of the band and left the band. The um, major band that was formed after that was Moose Malone, which was a country rock sort of uh, band, uh, which they toured and travelled and um, uh, went to Tamworth and won the Tamworth Cup, um, produced an album through RCA Records uh, called House of Blue Lights and two 45 singles. Um, uh, obviously, um, and on tour, constantly playing gigs um, in papers, newspaper articles, so they were quite a popular band for their time and, and were doing unusual or, or what you'd say a little bit out there type of music for, for that, that, that sort of era. I ran into him a couple of times and he just said to me, oh, we're thinking about putting a, an Eagles type band together, are you interested in joining it? And I said, oh, maybe. I said, depends on how much work's got to be done. Because we had five part harmonies, we were doing Eagles stuff virtually identical to the Eagles. It was probably the Probably, musically, it was probably one of the best bands I'd ever been in, as far as the vocals and everything go. Hey, ladies, have your boots and we'll groove on down to a nice spot by the edge of town. There's an eight-piece combo that just won't quit falling. See the blue light, let fall in, girl, and you'll see some sight down at the house, the house of blue light. We got fryers and broilers and Detroit. As far as Miss Malone goes, we had a um, pretty big following in Brisbane. We, we had a band called, uh, a hotel called Exchange, and we went from about 20 people a night to about 450 people within about a month. Anyway, eventually they sort of uh, fell to pieces. Um, I, I don't exactly know 
you know, what happened to that, as, but it's as bands do. I mean, musicians living together, it's a really hard thing, you know, to, to, for everyone. You live, you work together. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a musician thing, I suppose. I lost contact with, with uh, Jimmy after our, you know, initial teenage years and all of that and, and when I, I was very saddened to hear of his passing. During the end he was, um, or bef before he's, he passed away, he was uh, heavily into flamenco uh, and classical style sort of playing. Um, so from rock and roll to to that sort of style, it, it's very different. Yeah, he was getting into a lot of classical guitar and playing a lot of gut string guitar in in his last few years. Um, and he did record some uh, just uh, classical acoustic music. Uh, I know before he died. When we were sitting in the chapel, I actually thought that it was Tommy Emmanuel playing. Until I found out from Robin that his his wife, well, they split up, that it was actually Jim. I actually thought it was Tommy Emmanuel playing on the CD. You know, a lot of artists don't appreciate their own talent and skills, and um, that can become a demon for them too, even though they are very talented. A lot of people didn't really know how good he was, but. Would he like to be remembered? He could um, make anybody smile. He had a really funny sense of humour. And I remember him being very funny. And Life's funny things. It, it takes people in different paths and everybody lives, lives their own path. Um, I think he lived the one that he liked and, 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 and I was happy for that. Did I wish sometimes that he was, well, most of the time that he was probably still around. So even though, like I said, he get a few drinks under his belt, give me a bit of grief, I it said to him to be a pretty good friend. So, yeah. he, was, he was a very inspirational uh, guy, very talented. If only half the stories he told were true, <laughs> well, you know, he would have had a, a phenomenal life and he was just, you know, one of the players, mate. So I think he'd like to be remembered as a musician, you know, because that's what he was. One of the greats.